We are delighted to uh, bring to this pulpit a young man that was born in this church. He was born spiritually in this church. He's always been so kind and so respectful to leadership. First of all, Brother Yance and then myself. And God has used that to highly anoint his life. Started a church up in the Glenview area. God has been blessing them. And if I look at their lives, I, I, if someone said, you know, would you explain them to me? I would say, well, they're kind of like Jesus. They pray. They're passionate about the kingdom of God. Their lives are all about sacrifice. It's all about teaching Bible studies, discipling people, putting their lives on the line for the sake of the gospel, telling the world, we love Jesus, and if you want to love him with us, you're welcome to come here. But what, a, what a, an awesome couple of God. And I, I salute you. I respect you. You're a lot of fun. He's a good preacher, and he's a lot of fun. I think we ought to welcome the Lukashios to the pulpit in Jesus' name. Love you, man. Praise God. I rewrote that introduction for this afternoon, so that was a good, 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 uh, good revision, Pastor Betcher. Amen. Let's clap our hands to Jesus one more time. Come on, let's let a voice of praise out. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, God. Uh, just remain standing while I find my place here in the Bible. I went old school and brought my notebook in this thing. This is called a Bible. It's actually I got papers and ink. I can't just I can't tell it where to turn. I have to turn there myself. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Amen. It's called the Bible. I'm not being I'm not trying to be rude. It's just people bringing iPads and phones and stuff. And uh, I'm all for it, but sometimes you get that Facebook notification, and you get you move from the Bible, and you go to you get you get distracted. There's no notifications on here. There's only one message in here, amen. And the one I want to hear, amen. Amen. Now, unless you think I'm a hypocrite when you come see me, I do have a phone when I uh, just not when I preach, amen. I don't know why I said all that. It's so good to be here. This is this still morning? Yeah, been up a while. It's still morning. Good morning. This morning, it's good to be here. Um, you need to help me. I don't usually preach twice in the same day in the same message. It won't be the same message, I don't think. But um, I'm glad to be here. It's so good to see some familiar faces, the half faces that I can see. Um, I love you. I don't. Ha I don't want to start. Na I'm very thankful to see all of you. You're my friends. Some of my most favorite people here. For those of you that don't know me, um, I have had a small impact on this church. I'll tell you a story before you guys can. No, no, stay standing. I'll stay standing the whole service. You can handle it. So just, I was, I used to have a key to the building. And in fact, I was here before the building was up. I've prayed on the rock out there, scared of snakes and stuff, but I was out there and I prayed for this church and I prayed um, as I saw the building come up and they gave me a key. It was the most beautiful thing. I, I was so thankful I had the key. I said, can I come and pray anytime? He said, please do. And I remember one time I came right over here and I prayed and um, I said, Lord, I want to make an impact on this church. I want to make an impact in this world. And I said to myself, well, if I can do anything, I'll make an impact on this carpet. Because that's where I used to sit and I would dance and pray and cry and worship God right there. And I said, I'm going to make a difference on this carpet. And I just thought, man, if I can just discolor the carpet from all the dancing that I do here. And that was going through my mind as I prayed. That was a Saturday night. And um, there was a bad uh, storm that night. And uh, went home and came to church the next day. Turns out there's like a drain right there. And it backed up. And it literally discolored the carpet everywhere I was dancing the night before. And I stood there and I thought, huh, did I do that? <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and said, you're making an impact, at least on the carpet. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So I've made an impact on this church in that way right there. Um, so it's good to be back uh, again. Amen. I give honor to the leadership here and uh, particularly and, and most importantly to your pastor and Sister Betcher. They are fantastic leaders. They're great people. What you see here is how they are at home. 
uh, at the restaurant and everything uh, in between. They are um, true Christians. I know them better than you do, some of you. I know them very well, and they are, they are Christians to the core. And I'm very thankful for their leadership. Since the day you baptized me, you haven't changed much except a few gray hairs. Amen. And I'm thankful for them. Amen. I know that we're, man, these masks and social distancing and two services. Uh, if you're watching online, let me, let me tell you something. I've always been respectful of leadership. Now, there's always, not always, but there have been some troubles. But I've always felt very fearful to ever speak a word against my leaders. And I could stand here before God and say I've been true to that. Now, others have come to me, maybe have said a few things. I've never repeated it and never agreed with it. Uh, and I've always been very respectful. And I'm saying that because maybe you don't agree with masks and social distancing. Oh, man, we're in a free country. We're just telling Pastor Betcher before service in California, that was the first state that made the law you can't smoke indoors. I think used to smoke in surgery in this country. The doctor would be like, hold that for me, Susan. I'm about to pull out this vein, you know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. There's people who got ash in their heart surgery maybe. I don't know. They didn't know smoking was bad for your health. And so they, they banned smoking indoors in California first. And people fought against it. I'm sure the church thought the freedoms of their lives were being taken away. Or maybe not the church because, you know, we don't smoke. But people felt like the government was taking over their life. And, you know, they were rebelling. I'm going to smoke where I want to smoke. Listen, they were the first state to remove smoking indoors. That state's been on fire ever since. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not funny. I'm offending. I'm going to be offensive today, I guess. But... People get upset about everything. You think that you're free. To, how many wore a seatbelt on your way to church today? Don't you trust God if you get into an accident that he'll save your, save your body? You're fearful people. You know, that's what we would say. But here we are. So this is temporary, church. I encourage you to follow the lead of your. God will watch you and bless you in your future if you obey and follow the leading of your shepherd. Somebody say amen. If I say nothing else good, that was good enough right there. We take an offering right now and just go home. That, that's good enough. Amen. Praise God. Um, I, that's all I got, guys. If you're not going to laugh with me, at least preach with me. Amen. All right. Let's go to Micah chapter 7. Did I, did I get it all? Are we good? All right. Just preach. Praise God. I'm, I'm actually feeling good because the four cups of coffee I've had today are starting to take its work. Take effect on my, my mind. Amen. May speak a little faster than I want to, um, but uh, I always get nervous when I preach here. There's been some great messages and great preachers and great everything that has come from this pulpit. And I take that very seriously. Um, unfortunately for you today, uh, it'll be a little switch. We're going to switch it up here and have me preach to you instead of the great preaching you've heard. But I feel, I feel that I have a word from God for this church today. Uh, I do. I feel like it is for the whole church. Some of you need it more than others, but I feel like the whole church could benefit from the word. So let's, let's dive in. Micah chapter 7, verse number 1. Micah says, Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. As the grape leanings of the vintage, there is no cluster to eat. My soul desires the first ripe fruit. He's saying, I'm, I feel like the person that goes to the vine and grabs some grapes and there's nothing there. I feel like that's what I'm feeling right now. He said, that's how I feel. Verse 2, the good man is perished out of the earth. There's nobody good left. There is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net. I'd like to look at this portion of scripture, Israel's day that they were going through, through the lens of how we're, what we're experiencing today in our, in our day, in this country particularly. He said in verse 3 that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward or for bribery. They're looking for money. These leaders are looking for money. And the great man, he utters his mischievous desires. So they wrap it up. It's just like a, it's a gift. They, they, they're bribe. It's all about money and bribes. And these are leaders. In verse 4, he said the best of them is as a briar. They're prickly. The best of them is, is for a thorn bush. He said, the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. 
now shall be their perplexity. Verse 5, trust ye not in a friend? Don't even trust your friends, he said. Put ye not confidence in a guide? Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. He said, don't even trust your wife. Don't tell her anything and trust her with it. That's how bad it got. For the son dishonors his father. The father riseth up against the mother. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And a man's enemies are the men of his own house. There was division even in the home. The family was under attack. The social fabric of Israel was falling apart. But he says that in the midst of all that, verse number says, so far it's been pretty negative. But verse number seven, he continues, continues, he says, I can't trust anybody. But therefore, what do you mean therefore? Therefore, all this stuff that's going on, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. Amen. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. I'm going to pray. Amen. I'm going to wait on God. And he, while I'm waiting, I'm going to pray. And my God's going to hear my voice. And then not only God is going to hear my voice, he, he speaks a word to the enemy. And he says in verse number eight, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall Arise, when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Praise God. I believe that in this hour, somebody's going to rise up in their spirit today with a Micah 7, 8 verse. And they're going to not pray to God, but they're just going to say to the atmosphere, to say to the enemy around their life, I might be in darkness, amen, but the Lord's going to be a light unto me. I fell, but I'm getting up. I shall arise. Is there anybody in here with a resurrection spirit on them? Is there anybody in here that says you can't keep a good man down? You can't keep a good sister down? I shall arise. Praise the Lord. I want to preach for a little bit here on the subject, I shall arise. Let's put our phones down, our Bibles down, our crutches down. Amen. And let's lift our hands and our voices to the Lord right now and ask for his anointing. Jesus, your word is already anointed, but I pray our our, our ears and, our, and my mouth would be anointed with, an, with anointing God that will break every chain, that will break every source of bondage or discouragement or down, press down, Lord God, and that you would replace all of that with power and strength to say, I shall arise. I bind every opposing thing, God. I ask that you would loose the gift of faith, that the gifts of the Spirit would be loosed, Lord. You are not bound by anything. You are not restricted by anyone. I pray God the loosing of the Holy Ghost. I pray right now the loosing of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you would be free in our midst to accomplish everything. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Oh, I shall arise. I shall arise. He said when I fall, not if. When I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness. Sometimes our faith is tested and our trials that we go through can be very difficult. You get to a place where you feel like darkness is all around you. You can get to a place where you have prayed and God has answered your prayers and you believe in a prayer answering God. So you continue to pray. And not all prayer is petition. Not all prayer is asking for things. But there are times when your problem and your situation is so up in your face, that's all you can think about. That's all you can pray about. That's not wrong. It's just the season that you're in and you begin to pray for things. And sometimes, for me, most of the time, I'll be honest, my prayers go unanswered today. And, 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 and I'm not a doubting person. I have a lot of faith. I pray big prayers, and I'm waiting on God. And there are times where my faith is stretched and pressed and challenged. And in those times, I have a choice. I have an attitude. And how you may respond in that moment of darkness will determine your outcome. It determines your, uh, uh, your longevity or the the time frame that you're in this situation, dependent on your attitude, God will teach you a lesson. Man, let me tell you something about God. When he wants to teach you a lesson, he shows you no mercy. I don't know if anybody knows the kind of God that I serve, but sometimes he remains silent with his hands and arms folded and just watches me. And I'm like, God, throw me a rope or something. He's like, you can swim. 
I've been out here. Paul said, I swam. I, I was out in the deep for 24 hours. Have you ever treaded water for 24 hours? I feel like I have. I feel like I have. Call me Bob. <laughs> and, and, and God's just right there. You can reach out and lift me up. Save me, Lord. And sometimes he just wants to see where my faith is at. Some of us are in that place. Some of you are in that place right now. And you just feel like, God, why? Why? Wherefore and why? Those questions are not filled with faith. Anytime you see the disciples say, why, Lord? Don't you care? Don't you want? Where are you, God? Listen, when they were on that boat, Jesus said the words, we're going to go to the other side, on the other yonder uh, side of the lake. We're going to get in this boat, and we're going to go on the other side. And on the way, Jesus did what any normal father of 12 would do take a nap amen sleep a while and some of you mothers know what it's like to be interrupted from sleep by your children amen and he he's in the he's in the boat sleeping on a pillow in the back of the boat and when trouble comes and disaster comes that's when they remember Jesus is on the boat with us and they shake him up and they say Lord carest thou not why are you asleep don't you care that we're going to perish right now in the midst of the storm to me let me just say it how I feel brother they had a stupid attack Fear got a hold of them and they had a stupid attack. They lost their brains a little bit because Jesus said, we're going to the other side. We are going, we, me in the boat are going to, when they remembered Jesus was in the boat, their minds didn't go to the fact that the destiny of the son of God is that he's going to make it to the other side. If the, if the son of God, if Jesus the Messiah is in the boat with us, we're not going to drown. We're going to be okay. But instead they said, Lord, wake up. We're all going to die. That meant they thought Jesus was going to die. Do you understand why I say it was a stupid attack? They thought Jesus was going to die. Let me tell you something, those of you that got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you've got Jesus in your boat. He's in your vessel. Nothing that this world will throw at you can keep you down. This is not the place where you will die. This is just a temporary place, but you got to get a Micah 7, 8 in you and say, no, 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 I shall arise. shall arise he's in the boat with me praise God now when he's not in the boat that's when Peter's like hey let me go out where you're at there's a different kind of faith that does that okay but he's in the boat get him in your boat and everything's going to be all right but there's not a time that Jesus would say I'm going to go to sleep for a while and you're going to go through a storm while I sleep now that's kind of that's not fun but always remember, he's going to wake up, amen, and I'm going to get out of this mess. But sometimes we, get, we need a message like this to remind us, amen. And so how we respond in this situation will determine our outcome. So it's time to remember, I've got a Micah 7, 8 God. Praise the Lord. I shall arise. In October of 1871, I still didn't figure out how many years ago that was. What is it, 149? I think that's what it is. I don't know. Long time ago, uh, Chicago suffered one of her darkest hours. There's the, the news said, and the, the, the legend, I'll call it, says that Mrs. O'Leary's cow knocked over a lantern, and that lantern bro uh, broke and caught the feed of hay on fire, and that fire spread to the stall. Then the whole barn burned down. Then the farm burned down. Then the neighbor's farm burned down. The wind blew the flames in the whole city from, from there to the lake was all burnt to the ground everything nearby uh, caught fire and it burned for two days and burned to the ground only a couple of buildings survived what's called the great Chicago fire back then they rode on horse and buggy and uh, many of the buildings were made out of wood and the streets made out of wood and, and, uh, and the sidewalks, etc., were all very vulnerable. Chicago was made out of wood at the time, most of it. And so the fire lasted two days, October 8th, uh, 9th, and 10th, three days really. And then on October 11th, today's the anniversary of that rainfall that came and put the fire out. But there was the ashes of a city that had fallen to a great fire. 300 people lost their lives. 3.3 uh, square miles, four miles long and one mile wide. That's how big the fire was. 
100,000 people were homeless. 100,000 homes were gone. That's one-third of the city that was homeless that day until God made it rain. And there they were standing in the piles and rubbles uh, of, of, the, of the fire and the, the thing that had happened to them. Magnificent mile that you have walked on many times and shopped there and been visited the bean and gone to the lake. All of that, Lakeshore Drive and everything, was all rebuilt after the fire. In fact, it was built over a bunch of rubble. And at one point, everything from Michigan Avenue, Michigan Avenue used to touch the lake. So that's called Michigan Avenue. And everything east of that to the lake was, was rubble. And it was rebuilt from the ashes. And out of the ashes, three men came and decided they were going to make a beautiful scenery there. They're going to make a skyline. They're going to put buildings there. And they determined that the city was never going to burn down again. And it was going to rise up, but stronger and more powerful. And so the city gave birth to the world's first what they called at the time a skyscraper. The name stuck. And now we have skyscrapers all over the world. But this was the first steel structure instead of wood. Chicago bounced back. Today, I think it's one of the biggest, uh, best, biggest cities in America, if not the best big city in America. Uh, has some of the world's tallest buildings. Uh, but it's not even about what, that's not about, my message is not about that. My message is about the fact that Chicago rose up out of the ashes stronger and not even a, a the wind or the storms or lightning or anything could ever knock this thing down with a fire again. I wonder if somebody would understand the message the Lord is speaking to you today that out of the ashes you will rise up stronger. You will rise up with a Micah 7. He said, I'm going to fall down. I'm going to sit in darkness, but this is temporary. I'm going to rise up. Temporary, bro. Nothing on this life is permanent. Nothing is permanent. You can look yourself in the face, in the mirror, look yourself in the face and say, you know what? I'm not going to be in this place forever. It's not always going to be this way. I'm going to rise up. Sometimes you got to say that before it happens. Because it's not about how you start. I often tell people how I got in this thing, man. Mike, your brother was playing the drums. And his drumstick went flying in the air. And he kept playing the drums. Pulled another one out. I remember it. It was my first service ever. <laughs> and then we had a move of God. And Brian, can I, can I, I'm off track. But we're okay. We got a lot. There's no service after this. We got all kinds of time. And, and Brian, jo I can't really move around too much. I forgot we're in a pandemic. But Brian Jones, he's sitting next to me. He's a military man. He, he, he was sitting next to me, and he was like, I I've never been in a Pentecostal church in my life. I've, I've never been to anything near a Pentecostal. I've been to bars. I've been to blues bars. I've been to, I've been to wild parties and crazy parties. But I was never stiff and nervous like I was at this church. And there he goes. He's like, oh, and kind of moved. Excuse me. And he just took off. And he turned the corner. I'm like, oh, he must have left his car on or something. Like he, it looked like he was leaving. Like, oh, I forgot the toaster. It was on it was the oven. You know, and then he turned the corner. And he went all the way to the back. And he turned. And he turned again. And he came right back to where he was before he started running. I'm like, what did, what did you just do that for? And then he just, everything got quiet. And he's like, blah, blah. It's like he had marbles in his mouth. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why can't you talk? And everything gets quiet. And this guy playing the guitar up there. Hallelujah. Just feeling God moving his glasses. That's you. And, and he's up there, and all of a sudden he closes his eyes and he says, Thus saith God. And that's all I remember. The next thing I know, Vinny is running for the altar. And it, it was like he dove on the altar. Poof, belly flopped there. Oh, God. And Pastor Yance, who I didn't know at the time, said the famous words that I have just echoed in my ears over and over. He just stood up there. If you want God, just call him call on God and so I didn't know what to do so I said I want God and five people came up and said, oh, praise the Holy Ghost you ever, praise you ever, sin, repent of your sins I'm like sins I'm sorry that was, it. that was the only thing I said and then there you know people go praise the Holy Ghost so I said yeah Father Son Holy Ghost I've heard of him yeah I know and I was just sitting there waiting for them to pray and I got the Holy Ghost a week later I brought some friends we had revival Nine of my friends from school that were messed up on drugs and alcohol and everything else, they got the Holy Ghost saved. People are still serving God today. We brought over 100 people to church in those two years. I was at the DePaul University. It was great, man. But it's not how you start this thing 
or how you go through this thing. What matters is how you finish this thing. I had a great beginning. I've gone through some really rough stuff in the middle. But when this is all over, baby, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be up. I shall arise. Because I got a God who's never lost a battle. You might not be able to trust your neighbor. You might not even be able to trust your wife. Don't trust anybody, the Bible says. He said, in this hour, we've got all kinds of social discord and all kinds of division going on. Um, household is under attack. Everything, But I look to the Lord. Hallelujah. I will wait on my God. He is my Savior. And even though I'm down, I'm getting up. I might be in darkness, but there's a light coming. God will be a light on the world. Come on, who am I preaching to? You may be seated. You'll be up again. I shall rise again. This dude's got like one foot and he's, he's, he's up on it. He's on it. Amen. Central problem of Israel that day, that nation was in idolatry. That was their main problem. They, they wandered from the worship of the one true God. And, and, and that always resulted in punishment and bondage of some sort. And as a contemporary of Isaiah, Micah here, he knew what was to come. A neighboring nation, the proclamation of judgment was that Syria was going to come and take over. It was coming bondage, war, something. He said there was decay in the economy. Israel no longer had the great fruit that was, you know, prosperous of, of yesterday. The, the, the vineyards weren't producing as much fruit. I felt like everybody that was supposed to be kind suddenly turned into a thorn bush. Everybody that was supposed to have a smile on their face now were grinding their teeth. The politicians wanted money. Nobody could be trusted. There was a decay in the nation socially. Everything, we may appear strong on the outside, but Micah knew there were things that were not right internally. He says, uh, it's like going to eat grapes. You ever gone to the refrigerator and there was nothing there? <laughs> oh, God, have mercy. And, and that's how he felt. I went to the vineyard and there was just... A, just stuff that was the remnant of, of what was once there no fruit a good man is perish all good men are perished from the earth he, he, he it was just it was darkness he said everything around me has gotten hard I can't trust my friends I can't trust my wife but I can trust in God hallelujah so I will wait on God yeah. and then he said God is going to hear my voice and so will the enemy. So you got to talk to the enemy sometimes. I'm not talking about praying. I know T.W. Barnes said this, and I've repeated it over, over and over. I never gave him credit till right now. Maybe I have before. I'll give him credit. T.W. Barnes said, I don't care if it's an old used toothpick. If the Lord gave it to me, it's mine. And the devil can't have it. I don't care what it is. It's mine. The devil can't have it. Sometimes you got to talk to the devil. I'm not saying pray to the devil please don't misunderstand I offend a lot of people when I preach that might be a shock to you I'm sure but I'm not saying talk to the devil because you know do whatever when you talk to him you talk you put him in his place listen a thief doesn't obey the law but there is a law that there is a certain kind of law that a thief will obey Jesus said he's a thief the only law that a thief obeys is enforced law you got to enforce the law sometimes sit down Satan let me talk to you for a minute like the story of the bully in school. I read a story, and I thought this applied to preaching. Uh, it would be good for me to preach it. And I, I read it. It, it, was, it was a story of a bully that uh, was just always getting into fights in school. A new kid came to school, a Latino boy, and he, he came in, and he was doing well in school. And he went up to get his paper from the teacher, and the bully said, don't come down this aisle. He said, what? He said, this is, don't come down this aisle. Go around the other way. He said, well, it's not your aisle. And he walked down the aisle anyway. And the bully looked back at him and said, we're going to talk after class. We'll talk after school. And he got a little scared. So uh, he thought, no, I'll just grab my book bag and just get out of here and go home before he sees me. Well, that didn't work out. The bully saw him outside, and he said, we're going to talk a little bit. He started pushing him. He knocked his books down, you know. And the story goes on that right at the moment where the fight was going to break out, a crowd had gathered around, and he started to realize, if I wimp out and take off and run, I'm going to be known as a scaredy, you know, scaredy cat coward. I don't know, but I can't fight this dude. He's twice my size. What am I going to do? And just then, the horn beeps, and it's his aunt. Beep, beep. In Spanish, she speaks out to him and says, come on, I'm here to pick you up. What are you doing? And in Spanish back, he says to her, I'm about to get killed in a fight. Ayuta me. 
you know, in Spanish, he just says something, you know, like, please get me out of here. Send help. Get out of the car and get me out of this fight. And he looks at the bull. He says, come on, let's go. We're going to do this. But he said something in Spanish, a fearful cry out for help in Spanish. And then he knew the bully didn't know Spanish. He said, come on, let's go. We're going to do this. And the bully got confused and started to realize the fearless look on his eye and whatever he just said. I don't know if I want to fight this kid. And so he just said a few things and walked away. Praise the Lord. And he said, man, I got out of that fight because I spoke in a different language. And he walked off all happy and stuff. Let me tell you something. Don't let the devil put fear in you. Just speak in tongues for a while. Call out to God. And then you look at the devil and say, you might have knocked me down now but I shall arise don't you rejoice against me because I lost my job don't you rejoice against me because I've suffered a while don't you rejoice against me because I got delivered a big blow I shall arise I shall arise somebody said you gotta fake it till you make it I don't like that phrase I don't like fake it till you make it. No, I like faith it till you make it. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you've got to see it in the spirit before, it's, before it happens in the natural. Amen. You might be sitting in darkness, but you can see, you know, I'm going to get up. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to make it. Amen. This morning I talked about one of my heroes. He's not even a real person. His name is Rocky Balboa. I'll let you laugh for a minute before I get to my point. Rocky Balboa wasn't the brightest crayon in the box. But he never stayed down. I didn't watch all the movies, and I don't expect, don't do it. Just remember this. Rocky Balboa would get hit. And it ain't about how hard you get hit. <laughs> Come on, Alex. <laughs> you could get beat up, but get back up again. Amen. And something about Rocky Balboa in the 90s, I started to feel like I was Rocky Balboa in my Little, little skinny body that I played football in. And uh, I, I remember the coach would tell me, you're so wiry somehow. Uh, you don't seem to, you know, the blows you're taking don't seem to take, you know, effect on you. As long as you get up, I know you're all right. And I, I took that to my spirit. And I remembered one time, I, I'd always, that was my thing about football. I just, I got knocked down. And I thought, I just got to get up before the guy that knocked me down gets up. That'll look like it was nothing. And I get thrown all over the place. Uh, uh, and I just was, I, I was, I wasn't really smart, I guess, but I just went in head first. One time I remember this real big dude, Palatine High School, and he put his helmet right on the side of my helmet. It's probably why I got problems today, now that I think about it. It does explain a whole lot, yeah. And I, I got hit so hard, next thing I know, I got grass in my face mask, and I'm just down. And I couldn't hear everything, I hear the crowd, chow. I feel like I was underwater, and I remember thinking to myself, just get up, just get up, just get up. You got to get up, got to get up. Next thing you know, I'm on my feet, and all I could see was the color yellow. I guess that's a concussion. I didn't know what it was. And I, I was the bird dog, so I called in the plays and on, on offense. I'd go in and out every other play, and I knew I needed to get out right now and stay out. And so I didn't, I couldn't. I didn't know which way the sideline was, but I could hear Mr. Tedeschi's voice. Lucasio! Come on, Lucasio! He had a lift. Come on, he's a big dude. Lucasio! And I'm like, I gotta follow the voice. <laughs> and so I just, ah, uh, and I went over to him and he goes, Man, I can't believe you got up. And that always stuck with me. I impressed him because I got up, not because I took a big hit or how big the hit was. The impressive part is that I got up. It wasn't about how hard I got hit. It was the fact that I got up. The color yellow faded and I could see all the colors again. It wasn't, temp it was, maybe it wasn't so temporary, but I, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. I didn't stay down. I've seen other people get off on a stretcher. Not me. I'm not going on a stretcher. You don't rejoice against me, enemy. I might be down. Just give me a minute. The Lord's going to lift me up. I'm going to be lifted up. I shall arise. Yeah. We've suffered. We've gone through some things. But I'm not going to let the devil. Listen, I, uh, we suffer. But let me tell you about the suffering of Satan when you get up. Ooh. We were here at Passing the Mantle, um, and, and uh, Brother Raymond Woodward preached a message, anchor, uh, your anchor still holds, and he had a rope that went up to the balcony, and, 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 and he had it right here. He preached a message about, basically, he just said, grab a hold of this rope and hang on and pull, and some of the backsliders will come home. Some of the stuff that you've been praying for, just hang on to that rope so they don't get too far. Pull, pull them in. And so he said, anybody who's got a son or a daughter that's lost, wayward, backslidden, come up here, 
pull this rope. And I didn't know at the time, I'm not sure what the story was or who they were praying for, but the Shalms, Brother Alan Shalm, many of you know him, uh, and Sister Shalm were there holding on that rope. She was weeping, and Brother Shalm, with a couple of tears running down his cheek, began to pray, but he wasn't praying uh, uh, to God. He was began to speak, I should say, but he wasn't praying to God. He was proclaiming and saying some things, and he got to the point where the hair on my arms and my neck stood up because I got afraid. I actually was afraid, like not the fear of God, like I was afraid of Alan Shalm. And he stood there, and he was like, he was holding that rope, and he said the word, same words over and over and over. You will suffer for this. You will suffer. Tears were rolling down his face. His wife was weeping, and he's holding on that rope. And I knew he was talking to the devil. And I knew what he was saying was true. And I began to imagine. I, I, the book of Revelation flew in my mind. And I, and I said, yes, he will suffer. Amen. And this is, and I believe Alan Shaw going to be up there watching him burn and going, I told you, you will suffer. Amen. I believe that we've in the situation, in the trial, in the darkness, if we could stand up and say, don't you rejoice again against me you will suffer for this there's something about your attitude when you're in the situation that God looks down and says now it's time to resurrect now it's time I don't know if I've come with a word for this congregation here but maybe the Lord is telling you now is the time just stand still and see that I am the Lord I'm going to do some stuff my God hallelujah Man, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost, all kinds of stuff going. I'm supposed to preach the message I preached this morning. Let me tell you a different story this morning. David was king of Israel, and he sent some people over to another land and, and to give him honor, and the king got a little concerned. He said, they're coming to spy out the land, and, and, and they're, 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 they're going to come and try to, to, to set up a, a war, and, and I don't believe it. And he said, give me, give me those guys. Come and bring them over here. Put them in handcuffs. Cut their robe off at the buttocks area. Did I say that? The rear end area. That's what the Bible says. They, they uncovered their hinder parts in a robe there and shade hat their beard. And so they were shamed and they were ridiculed. And they, it's all right, brother. Go ahead and laugh. Amen. Told you if we can't laugh today, we're not going to get anything out of it. And there they were. They were ashamed and they made a phone call and said, King David. It's cold in this land. No, I'm just kidding. They said, they said, ah, we've been shamed. We we got we got no clothes and the back side's open and they shaved our beard. They didn't receive your honor. They didn't receive the splendid uh, warm welcome was not given to us. They shamed us. And David said, Don't you come home shamed. You stay there till your beard grows back. Get yourself a new pair of clothes and I'll take care of the rest. Wait a minute. Wait, you know the story, but let me tell the rest of it for the rest of you. David mobilized an army. What once was a peaceful king when his kids, uh, when his servants uh, were shamed and treated, mistreated by the enemy. David said, let's get the whole army and this time let's show them who they're messing with. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place saying, you might have been knocked down and you have been knocked down. There's nothing wrong with that. But the Lord has taken no Notice of your situation. And the Lord would say to you, you just stay in Jericho a while until everything gets back to normal. I'll take care of the rest. Man. Woo! Resurrection power. Praise the Lord. My daughter used to play in the bathtub. Amen. She still bathes. She doesn't play in it anymore. At least, I don't know. She's too old, you know. But she's playing in the bathtub, and she was young enough, right? You know, just make sure she didn't drown in there. I was with her. And uh, she had this little ball. The bee ball, she called it. The bee ball. And, and uh, uh, she thought it was really cool how you, you bring it down under the water and hold it there. And as long as you got the pressure uh, on that ball, under it stayed under but when you left the pressure left the ball went and it just shot up out of the water and she thought that was the coolest thing and did it over and over and over and over and i said there's not going to be a different result honey just remember it and just move on to the next step grab the soap or something but she thought this is the coolest thing ever and she was amazed by that and about the 557th time it happened the holy ghost spoke to me and said you know why that ball can't stay down because of what it's got on the inside it's got air on the inside. He said, you know why you can't stay down? 
because I'm on the inside and you can't keep me down. <laughs> Ain't no grave gonna hold this body down, hallelujah. As long as you got Jesus on the inside, you're gonna rise up. I, I, I've had the, uh, I, I did mention a little bit about it this morning. I know it's a sensitive subject, but this COVID thing has wrecked me, man. It, it wrecked me. It wrecked a lot of us. And, and, and a lot of you perhaps have gotten the virus or know somebody. Of course, we've all had, we know somebody that has passed from it. I lost our right-hand man in our church. Uh, and we've had some, you know, I was sick for eight weeks. A couple of those weeks, I was down on my back. I couldn't even talk. I, I, was, I, I thought I was going to go. Uh, I thought, I, I don't know what was happening. I told my wife to check the life insurance policy, make sure we made the last payment, and told her to get remarried if she wanted to and everything. She's like, good. And she pulled out her notebook. She's like, I got some prospects. Let me <laughs> see if I got their phone number. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I tell the truth, you're right. That part about the notebook was not true. She wants me to tell the truth. The rest of it was true. <laughs> I did tell her that. Amen. <laughs> I, but I was discouraged. I was so discouraged. I thought to myself, this is my chance to quit. This would be all right. People wouldn't, wouldn't fault me if I just said this was too much of a blow. Let's just call in the presbyter. Let's call Pastor Betcher, find one of those guys that he's got on his church, take over, whatever. Brother Gonzalez will take care of it, and we'll just kind of just lay here until all the dust settles, and that'll be it. But the Lord said, no, you didn't do anything wrong. You're doing what I called you to do. If you walk in your calling, I'll take care of the rest. And I began to say the only mustard energy, I mustered up some energy. The only thing I could say was get off my lungs and get under my feet. Get off my lungs and get under my feet. Get off my lungs and get under my feet. I kept saying it over and over. But sometimes you do what you're called to do and you're knocked down. Paul had a vision of the Macedonian man saying, come help us. Preach the gospel to me. And Paul said, I got to go to Macedonia and preach the gospel. And he went to the city of Philippi, which was the capital of that area. And he went and he preached. In fact, he cast the devil out of a woman. You'd all have thought that they would have celebrated that, but they didn't. They threw him in jail because of it. They beat him up and his buddy Silas too. And there they were, beaten and bruised and chained in shackles. And, 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 and the Bible says they went into an inner prison. And in an inner prison, they treat you like an animal. They got a little hole in the bottom of that cell where you go to the bathroom. And there's another dish that's made out of clay that's attached to the floor where they throw food and you eat on your hands and knees like a beast and when you're worthy of misconduct and they want to punish you even more they sink you down to your armpits into that hole that's not flushable okay I'm sorry I know it's uh, lunchtime, but it's all right you can handle it the Bible's not rated G praise the Lord there's some stuff that happened in the scriptures that if you look at it Paul and Silas suffered a whole lot more than than handcuffs why because they were doing what they were called to do but what did they do in their circumstance and in their situation? The Bible says at midnight they prayed and sang praises unto God. In fact, they sang so loud that the other prisoners heard them. Oh, hallelujah. I, I have some experience in this. Unfortunately, I've been to jail. Amen. And I remember in jail we played rock, scissors, paper until we sobered up. Amen. It was like best out of 147. And we were playing. And I could hear the prisoners uh, in the cell next to us and I was like no you shut up and I thought to myself if we get released at the same time I got to change my voice because I don't want these guys sound rough and I'm not really tough you know I'm just in a different cell safe and I remember thinking to myself of that story when I read Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises loud enough so that the other prisoners could hear there was a boldness in them they weren't saying oh man we got beat up we said, God where are you now no 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 they were saying even at midnight I'm tired and Silas looked over at Paul and said Paul what do you want to do and he said what's that one song brother Betcher used to sing when we were in church he was saying I, I got it I got it can't do it about the Holy Ghost yeah let's sing that one and they started singing the beauty of the uh, 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 remember one, one time Michael sang that song uh, that song, He Is, Bad in the Basement of That Want Your Man, I Got on My Face After You Sang That Song. And Paul, I remember that song, and he started singing that. He was off key even, and the prisoners heard it, and God.
God said, aha, the attitude and the response to your situation has unlocked the powers of heaven. And now I got to shake, rattle, and roll. This jailhouse is going to rock. And they're swing open the doors m m uh, miraculously their chains and shackles fell off uh, amen and they had not just freedom they had a revival break out right there in that prison cell what is God doing uh, in your darkness what is God doing uh, with your demise what could he do sometimes a miracle looks like a mess sometimes it looks like it'll never change I'm, I've messed up it's nobody's fault but mine. I'm the one who left my father's house. I'm the one who decided to take the inheritance early. And my older brother, he didn't really stop. Nobody stopped me. I said, Dad, get, I'm backsliding right now. I want to do it happily. I'm going to go to Las Vegas and spend everything. I'm going to have all kinds of fun. And when his money ran out, of course, I'm, I'm alluding to Luke 15, the prodigal story of the prodigal. And, then, and he's there and all of his money's out. And he's eating the food that they feed the pigs. And, and, and he sits there and he sits down. He's in the mud. He's in the slop. And he's thinking to himself, man, I remember my father had servants they ate good food and here I am eating this stuff pigs ought to be eating this stuff the pigs are fighting I'm fighting the pigs for the food and in my father's house there's plenty of food you know what he said come on somebody you know what he said I shall arise and go to my father's house. Sometimes we just got to get up out of the mess, out of the situation, muster up enough courage and say, I know I've messed it up, but I'm still going to get up. I shall arise and I'm going to go. And he rehearsed his repentance message the whole way. Amen. But when he got there, the, the father already had a plan. The father said, listen, because you've made this move, because you've done this, made this decision in your situation, I'm on Locking some blessings. I'm releasing some favor. I'm going to do some stuff that you don't deserve, son. But because you had the right attitude in the darkest of your hours, uh, God is saying, I've got you in my hand. Rise up. Rise up. Stand with me. I, um, man, I went all over the place today, but that's good. Make sure you spray me down real good before we leave. The Lord has put this in my spirit today. I know this church has gone. We've, we're like, we're in this together. And, and that's not just a phrase for the politicians. We're in this thing together. I'm talking like our church and this church. We, I understand the suffering. I understand the, the feeling of restriction and how we're trying to play it safe. And I, I understand all that. That's just frustration there. There's, there's, just, ah, there's just, it's not the same apostolic. How long is this going to be this way? Is this the new normal? I've come to tell somebody, we are to rise up out of this stronger, more powerful, more full of faith. God is looking at this situation saying, I see your faith even in the dark times. When you lost some stuff, you hung in there when you busted your ankle tore some stuff uh, you didn't stop standing in church you didn't stop coming I've got a blessing for you because of that you're going to learn some stuff and when the stuff that you learn is all said and done God is going to show himself mighty amen why maybe you don't get healed maybe you will but maybe you don't but God is going to do something and show himself mighty in the midst of it all we suffered a while I, I lost some people, we've lost some friends, we didn't handle it probably just right according to everybody's liking and everybody wants to attack the pastor and um, make, make the pastor accountable for all that's going on and so we've lost some people and I didn't know what to do and I, 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 we just keep going. I'm waiting on God. I told my daughter, and you were here, some of you, I told my daughter, have a sleepover. You want revival in your school? She said, yeah, I guess so. So, all right, you want, if you want revival, I'm going to give you a plan. Have a sleepover on one condition. They all got to come to church. And when they come to church, we're going to the Bartlett Church. They're having a youth revival there. Jason By is preaching. And Pastor Betcher can pray a goat through the Holy Ghost if it came to, it, came to it. I said a wooden spoon at the time. You can pray a wooden spoon through the Holy Ghost, but you can pray a goat through the Holy Ghost. That thing will be barking like a dog, man. I'll tell you what. Speaking in, speaking in tongues. Okay. 
And they came, and four of them right up here, they came and prayed for over an hour, and they spoke with tongues. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost right here in this service. A couple weeks later, we had Brother Hernandez come and preach. Another five, a teacher in the school got the Holy Ghost, that service. And then, and then wham, poof, COVID hit. We thought everything was over. But when we came up out of that thing, my wife and I said, what are we going to do? Do prayer walks? Should we knock on doors? Should we give out masks? What should we do? we got to bless the community. we got to let them know. We're this, I have this saying. Said, We're the safest church in Chicago. We already had it. we got the antibodies here. And, and, uh, and, and, and we tried everything. But God, slowly but powerfully, God is doing a great work. My daughter has now got nine of her friends baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Fourteen of them got the Holy Ghost. Last a uh, couple weeks ago, we baptized 10 in the pool in my backyard, freezing cold water, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord spoke to me and said, 10 got tested positive for COVID-19. In 44, there was a news article that, that uh, 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 you probably read it. You probably saw it. The 10 tested positive over at Glenview Life Church and 44 sick. And this big newspaper, you know, the news went all over the place. We were on Good Morning America and all this stuff about how this pastor is an idiot, had church in the middle of COVID, which wasn't true. And uh, uh, anyway, when I saw that news article, I, I cringed. I thought, oh, yeah, people are going to, we're known for disease and sickness. And then all of a sudden, the Lord said, said no 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 read it again it said 10 got baptized in Jesus name at Life Church and 44 more coming amen that's exactly what I felt the Lord was telling me and I thought my God we're gonna have revival what we thought was a disaster everybody else's church is shut down and they're like hey we heard people are getting the Holy Ghost here I wonder if I can get it my daughter's friend that got the Holy Ghost in our church started telling her friend about it and while they were driving the car this dude's never been to church while they're driving the car, he started feeling the Holy Ghost because the music was about God and he pulled over, tears running down his face. And this girl's only been to church about five, six times, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, prayed her friend through to the Holy Ghost right there on the side of the road. Teenagers. He said, I want to be baptized. I was like, you have never been to church. Here's my religious mind going, I need to be your pastor. I need to do Bible study. The Lord's like, man, do you want revival or not? Just baptize people. He already filled them with the Holy Ghost. I can't control what's happening because I'm not the one in control. The Holy Ghost said, if you fall down and you come up, watch what I do. Amen. You might have been shamed. Listen, I got a feeling in my spirit right now. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. I might have fallen. I will fall again. But when I fall, I shall Arise. Praise God. Some of you need to have that attitude today. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes they don't know how to do it. That's why we gather. There's strength when someone lays hands on you. Something in your spirit says, I, I just need help right now. And I don't have the strength that this preacher is preaching about to rise up but I do want some help if that's what you're feeling today I think it's all right if you step out in the aisle and if you social distance you make your way up to this altar here I think your custom here is if you don't want prayed for you may sit down but before you sit down I want you to make the decision that I'm only sitting down in posture in my body but on the inside I'm still standing up praise the Lord on the inside I'm rising up praise God but if you want prayed for you can remain standing I feel the Holy Ghost in here somebody needs to be lifted up somebody needs some help being lifted up oh hallelujah I've been lifted up I've been lifted up oh one more thing before we pray man I feel the Holy Ghost Jesus walked on water and Peter said can I come and Peter walked on the water amen and he was like this is awesome and then the waves came and he got a little discouraged a little nervous and what happened he sunk but he didn't stay down he said Lord help me save me and the Lord picked him up with his hand and picked him up and Peter walked back to the boat you know he walked on water back to the boat and that experience changed Peter's life and one day Peter's walking to the temple to pray and there's a man there with legs that don't work and he looked at him and the man said, I need some money. Would you have some money for me? I'm needing money. I can't work a job. My legs are, don't work. And Peter looked at him, and that memory came to him. He said, you know what? I've been in your position before. I couldn't get up, and somebody helped me up. He said, I don't have money, silver and gold. I have none. Broke preacher. 
but he said I do have something that I can I've been where you're at I once couldn't walk but then Jesus reached out and he lifted me up such as I have I give unto thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ rise up and walk and so in that spirit and in that anointing I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, rise up by the power of God uh, and walk hallelujah even though all hell is breaking loose walk uh, even though the darkness is all around you walk uh, in the name of Jesus walk and rise up praise God let's lift our hands right now I preach my guts out up here and I know some of you need to just reach out to the Lord right now God I need to rise up I need your help to rise up God loose the Holy Ghost right now somebody needs resurrection somebody needs to be lifted up somebody needs faith restored somebody's lost some things you need to restore it like Chicago rose up from the ashes Lord I pray there'd be a rebuilding a remaking oh God hallelujah of my life that I would walk supernaturally by the power of God come on somebody that needs prayer somebody that the Lord is talking to you come on the Holy Ghost is talking to you say come on up it's time to break that uh, break that barrier and come on up uh, come on up to the front right now and let the Holy Ghost breathe life back into your body breathe life back into your situation uh, though you walk in darkness uh, hallelujah the devil might be laughing at you now you tell him sit down devil I'm going to get up uh, sit down right where you're at I'm going to be in the light hallelujah come on somebody there's another couple of spots up here somebody reach out to the Lord say, I need some help. I'm going to believe God's going to turn my situation around. I shall arise. I shall arise. I shall arise. I shall arise. Come on, let's lift our voices. Oh God, I need you. 